Hello everyone, welcome back to Super Sponge. We are starting up on Precipice Canyon. I think this is chapter 3, I already forgot. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, so yeah, I uh, actually lied in the last uh, episode. I said that it would probably just be two parts this game, but turns out after uh, cutting through all of the gameplay, it's going to be three parts. But the next one's going to be pretty short, so shouldn't be too bad. Uh, this is a thing that fires jellyfish, um, like a lot of the sort of alternative items to attack things with in this game, it's mostly just a hindrance because you have to be precisely lined up with whatever thing you're shooting at, and not everything is like that, especially when you're not on a flat surface like this, but it's okay. And we got more blinking jellyfish. Yeah, something like this is where, you know, it would be a lot cooler to just be able to be near it and chop it, but can't complain too much, I suppose. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the movie game doesn't have you do it, and I guess maybe Lights, Camera, Pants as well, but most of the SpongeBob games that I can remember seem to... Uh, have a jumping on the tops of jellyfish thing in them. Also, I just noticed that the bottom pixel of the uh, little shooter thing's icon in the corner, when it goes back up, you'll see. Yeah, the last bottom pixel is sticking out at the top. I never realized that. I thought that maybe I had, like, you know, sized the recording window wrong and was cutting off part of something. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> just continuing on with this game. Uh, I, I did have fun playing through this game, because spoilers, I already recorded all the gameplay for it. It's a very short game. Um... And uh, it was neat to come back to it, even though it is a little bit janky and not all that great. Um, it's still cool also to sort of relive that time on the TimStars03 channel that I was LPing this game, um, which took eight parts uh, back when we had 11 minute long videos. Those were good times. I was talking earlier on uh, one of my streams that um, I've been re-watching some old uh, Bicked Up on a Bus videos for people who are not aware. Bicked Up on a Bus was the first Let's Player that I ever encountered on YouTube back in 2008, 2009, something like that, and uh, was the one who made me want to try to make a YouTube channel and do that sort of thing, which I ended up doing with the Tim Stars of 3 account in 2010. And, um... I haven't really watched his videos consistently since, like, 2012 or 2013. It's been a little while. Um... But I do like coming back sometimes to old stuff. And so I've been watching his uh, Super Demo World LP, which was from around this time of year when it started back in 09. Um, I've also watched some of his Banjo Tooie LP, which is pretty good. Um, and yeah, especially. I really want to also watch the Mario Sunshine and Mega Man 9 ones and like alternate between them. Um, and I was also watching, uh, his Let's Try, or... It was really just the first segment of an LP that he ended up dropping, of Tomb Raider 4. And, um, I don't really... The videos aren't that great because the game is kind of boring and, like, he doesn't have a whole lot to say about it. But I, I mean, I fucking watched all those shits when they came out, and so, uh, I just gave it a look the other day and I just got this warm, fuzzy feeling wash over me. Because I, I just remembered, you know, coming home from school, and usually he would have... Mario Sunshine would be the first one he would put up, and it'd usually be up by, like, 4pm, which was shortly after I had to get home from school. 
I would usually have gotten some food or a snack from 7-Eleven or McDonald's or something in my carpool. And, uh, I guess I was in, like, middle school. It was probably in, like, 8th grade. And, um, or 7th. 6th, 7th, 8th, one of those. Middle school. Um, and then, uh, Mega Man 9 or whatever would be up, uh, you know, an hour or two later. And then I remember when Tomb Raider 4 was going on. I don't know, it was just... It's nice to uh, reminisce, to remember that time. Inside the whale. Apparently there's a whale that we're inside of, despite no uh, evidence to show that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Just, even though uh, the <laughs> Mario Sunshine LP, the video quality is pretty fucking awful. Uh, his capture card wasn't really working at the time, but it was interesting going back and watching those old videos. It, it's always nice to go back and revisit old YouTube stuff, especially from that time, because, I don't know, that was a nice time in my life, personally. Uh, but, yeah. Speaking of, uh, going back to stuff, by the way... I have also been... Rewatching uh, Spongebob episodes. I've been going through the episodes for a little while now, like I was going through season one back when I was doing Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, and then I took a little bit of a break, and now Liv and I have been watching seasons four and five, which I still call the newer seasons, even though they are from like 2007 at the latest, which is still 13 years ago, and there's like... I think there's 11 full seasons at this point, which is pretty fucking crazy. I mean, even to me, like, I've seen I've seen clips and stuff from, like, seasons 8 and 9, and, uh, those are what come into my head when I think of, like, new, new Spongebob episodes, and even those are, like, four or five years old already. Um, but anyway, uh, I've been watching seasons 4 and 5, which I haven't gone through and watched those episodes all the way through in probably like a decade or so because I, like most people, have just kind of operated on the assumption that like the post-movie episodes aren't good, uh, you know, it's not the same sort of standard of quality as uh, the older ones, and so I just never really got back to them. Every time that I made it through seasons one through three, I was like, all right, well, I've watched all the Spongebob that matters. And, but I've been watching those seasons for realsies, and while there is certainly something about, like, just the texture and quality of the animation, um, that is different, I'm not smart enough, I don't know enough about the actual, like, conditions of production to say exactly what it is, but it just looks different, the sound is different, I think they make... I think they've made Spongebob's voice, like, progressively higher pitched over the course of the show. I may be wrong about that. Anyway, that boss was pretty easy. Um, but there, there is that, which just kind of takes it away. It doesn't have that same classic sort of cell look of the first three. Um... And I mean, the first three, they have like some janky pieces of animation, but I don't know, that sort of roughness and hand-drawnness of it is, is still fun uh, and looks nice sometimes. And, I, and just like the coloring of it and everything. But, uh... And also, like, there are far more like duds and middling episodes in seasons four and five than one through three. I feel like 1 through 3, you can probably get, like, a real killer episode, like, every second or third episode, probably, on average. There's only a few in seasons 1 through 3 that I, I think, you know, are good, but don't really, like, hold up to the best ones as much. Um, seasons 4 and 5, it's pretty rare. Like, 1 through 3, I can think of a few where... It's uh, the pair of two episodes, and both of them are really, really funny. And that just doesn't happen as often with seasons four and five. If you get a really good one, it's usually the only good one in the pair of two episodes. But all of that being said, I do have to say, um, I have been liking more of the episodes of seasons four and five than I thought I would, and I've been liking them more. 
Like, I've liked more of them, and I'm liking them more than I thought I would. Uh, there are some pretty clever jokes, and especially in Season 4 and a few in Season 5, they don't exactly look like it, and something about, like, the pacing and editing of some of the jokes and scenes is a little bit... It's too rushed in some places, I'm not sure exactly why uh, it feels that way. But there are a lot of jokes and scenes and episodes, again, mostly in 4, but some in 5 as well, that do feel like they could have come out of an earlier Spongebob episode. And, um... You know, I appreciate that, and those moments are where I think the humor is at its most clever and funny and, you know, reminds me the most of the good old days of Spongebob stuff. Sorry, I've just been doing a lot of talking, so I was taking a big water pause there. Most of the time, if you hear my audio cut out briefly, which I try to make it as unnoticeable as possible, especially with the noise cancellation and audacity, it hopefully kind of masks when I am not, like, when the audio track isn't there, versus when I'm just being quiet. But whenever you hear me do that, it's usually that I'm drinking water and I just don't think you want to hear me slurping slamming the bottle down that kind of thing although I, there are some videos where I accidentally leave it in and you can hear it and I'm sure it bothers nobody but if it does sorry it, I only do it when I'm like being forgetful or when I'm in a hurry to get the video done and these spinning starfish things are really annoying I don't know if you can kill them, I'm sure you probably can, but they mostly just run into you and hurt you, so I just try to run away from them and not interact with them, and I'm going the wrong way. But if you get hit by them, it's not like the end of the world, but it does suck. And I always run into these fucking zombie dudes. I can't, I guess you can't tell just from looking at it, but there are a couple of times where, especially if you're moving and I hit the B button to do the chop move so that it, I, I like start doing it before the enemy gets near me so that it lines up with it when it hits me. And because I'm moving, it just won't do it. I don't think you have to be standing perfectly still to do the chop, but sometimes it acts like it. And yeah, so sometimes it'll look like I'm just doing nothing, and sometimes it'll even make the little whoosh sound effect that it makes when you do the chop, but you won't actually do it and uh, it's fucking dog shit. And yeah, those stupid uh, ghost things show up in the background. It took me uh, un until like after I got hit by it just now in this, my, you know, the second go round of this game, really my third, but the second recently, you know? It took me that long to figure out that those, are, those things actually hurt you. I thought that they were just things in the background. And I, I don't think there are any real indications that they're going to pop up except maybe the gravestone, but I, I'm not observant enough for that shit. Yeah, I guess they come out of the gravestone, and I think you just have to wait for them. I don't know if you can kill them. I know you can hit these little skull things to get them to at least leave you alone for a minute, like I just did there. But yeah, I mean, I just let my fucking invincibility take care of it and not really worry about it. Um, so, uh, one thing that I wanted to try to make time to talk about in this video, because it is a Spongebob video, so I feel like it's an appropriate topic, is something that I'm sure many of you heard about, which is that Spongebob is gay now, and I'm, uh, I don't know, it just seemed like one of those things that would be appropriate to talk about in a video, and because I talk about Spongebob all the fucking time, and, I, and then I feel like people would probably want to know my take on, because on the one hand, I am someone who is kind of averse to, like, erroneously or retroactively assigning different identity groups to, like, cartoon characters or, like, characters in fiction, especially in children's fiction, that don't really clearly exhibit any of those 
identity groups just for the sake of it. I mean, I know that most people just do it for funsies, but it's kind of like what shipping was on Tumblr for me, like, where people would just say, you know, oh, they, they love, they want to fuck each other. And it's like, well, I don't think there's really anything in the show or movie or whatever that says that to me particularly, but whatever. It doesn't really bother me. So on the one hand, that, but on the other hand, you know, uh, Spongebob is, uh, you know, feminine. There is that uh, notorious line where he says bye to Squidward twice and then says I like Squidward and just in general is affectionate to male characters in the show and seems generally disinterested in Sandy. I mean, whenever people would, like, like I said, the Tumblr shipping community, whenever they would, um, you know, ship Spongebob and Sandy and talk about how Spongebob and Sandy are in love, uh, they would usually just point to episodes where, like, Spongebob was sad that she wasn't hanging out with him, but he does that with Patrick and Squidward and everybody. Like, she's his friend. I never really got the idea that they were uh, together, or that, like, he was attracted to her particularly. I think he just wants to impress her, maybe just because she's a girl, but I don't think there is any sort of means to an end there for Spongebob. I never got that impression. And the only reason that as a kid I ever accepted the idea that Spongebob and Sandy were meant to be together is because, you know, like most people, I grew up with a heteronormative mindset. Um, but, I mean, obviously all of this doesn't really fucking matter, and yeah, I kept getting my ass kicked trying to go up the top way, so I just eventually decided it's probably not worth it, and I'm just gonna go down the bottom, which I wanted to avoid because it has those spinning starfish things, but I don't care. I I'd rather do that than... Because I fell actually several more times after that. As you can see, I have 11 lives now. I had like 17 going into this level. I really gave it my best shot, but whatever. I'm glad that I'm not as shitty as I was when I first LP'd this game on my old channel, where I had to constantly abuse save states, which is probably why it took 8 11-minute parts. And here's the Flying Dutchman. He is annoying. Um... I was trying here to do the strategy of if you if you time it right, you can chop him right after he appears before he shoots out the jellyfish and without getting hurt, but you have to time it right, and I fucked it up. And then after a few times he does this thing where he flies at you, and yeah, sometimes he just appears at the top of the screen where you can't see him and you can't see how he's gonna get you and you get hurt and it fucking blows. Um, and I collected the, uh, Krabby Patty, so I don't have a health pickup. So yeah, I die here, and then I'll try it again, and then I actually do it successfully. And once you figure that out, and you can do that trick successfully, it's an incredibly easy boss. Uh, setting the precedent, I suppose, since this came out in 2001, uh, this game is setting the precedent for all other subsequent Spongebob games that have a Flying Dutchman boss fight where it's not very hard or fun. Um, and yeah, I usually just go for the trying to get him right as he appears because I suck at dodging the jellyfish because the jumping and uh, hitboxes in this game are fucking garbage. So yeah, you want to hop over that. I guess I did it that time, but it doesn't matter because I do it correctly this time. But anyway, my take on Spongebob being gay now. My take is, for one thing, um, he can be gay. Uh, there are a lot of people who are like, you know, this is an affront to Steven Hillenburg because back when it was controversial, you know, when, uh, like, Rock by Bivalve and that, um, what do you call it, like, Focus on the Family, or the We Are Family Foundation, um, did that video, and, uh, the Catholic League got all mad that Spongebob was promoting homosexuality. Um, during that, Steven Hillenburg said that Spongebob is asexual, and they were like, we should honor the creator's wishes, but you can be gay and asexual. You can be attracted to men and not act on it. 
And the other thing is the Nickelodeon message, because they announced it on Twitter just as part of their Pride Month thing with, like, you know, LGBTQ characters. That's how they referred to them. They didn't say specifically gay. They just said our Nickelodeon characters in the LGBTQ community, which does include the asexual community. So, Spongebob has been LGBT since Hillenburg's, like, this announcement, I don't think it presents any controversy, and, yeah, Spongebob's gay. You're just finding out, like, get with it. Anyway, next time, more stuff.